Hey there, performance management students. Steve here, and in this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming ACCA exam. I'll take you through the topic of expected values, and we will do that in the context of the past exam question, GAM. So before you go on, you can download that question. The link is below in the description. Try it first, continue watching. You'll get so much more out of the video. And if you'd like to watch all of my videos, including premium content with none of these YouTube ads, and join my WhatsApp group, you can click on the link right here. Okay guys, try the question and then continue watching the video. Welcome back everybody. Let's try this together now. So first thing we need to do is understand what decision is it that we have to make, and that is setting the price. So we will be using the spreadsheet tool to build a very nice profit and loss statement, combining all of the different demand states and the price that we can choose. But the first thing to find is our decision. We need to decide on a price and Next thing is what demand, that is the uncertainty. What is the demand that could happen? And we can populate those rows. We have two prices, three demands, so that's a total of six rows. We've got a price of 30, three times, and a price of 35 three times. And we have different probabilities of demands, and the demands could be 120, 110, 140, okay, or 108, 194. Now we can get started with the P&L now that we have that first bit done. So with price and demand, we could get sales, total sales. Now we have to go to the costs and we see in the question, we've got three categories of cost, don't we? We've got a variable cost. We've got the advertising costs. We've got the fixed production costs. So let's make a template before we get into the details. Always a good idea to make a template before you get lost in the, into the details. So we've got sales, then we can do a VC per unit, total variable cost. Then we have the advertising. We have the fixed costs. And if we net all of those columns together, we could get our profit. All right, let's make this row bold at the top here, our column headings. There's no marks for formatting, as you know, but it's just nice, easier on our eyes, easier for the marker to follow what we're doing. And the variable cost, well, let's clear the sales. The sales will simply be the product of what? Price multiplied by demand. And let's use the built-in tool of just pulling down that cell, auto-copying for us. Lovely. Now, carefully read in the question, we see we have two levels of variable cost for production levels over 100,000. We see that it's $11 per unit. For 100 or less, we see that it's 12. So there's a nice economy of scale that happens if our production volume goes over 100. Total variable cost, everybody, will simply be what? Equal to demand multiplied by variable cost per unit. Let's set that negative. Let us set that negative so it's easier to quickly do our 
profit calculation at the end. Okay. So that's our total variable cost, the demand multiplied by the variable cost for unit. Advertising everybody, we see from the question it's 900 for the price of 30. We see that it is 970 okay, for the higher price. Fixed costs are 450, so we can put that there, and I can just pull that down. Guys, we're making quick work of this activity using the spreadsheet tool. So last but not least, the profit will simply be equal to I would use the sum function. That's the only function you really, you really need in this paper, guys. Um, but because of that variable cost per unit is in the way, I will just go, that will be equal to the sales plus the negative variable cost plus the advertising plus the fixed cost. Just like Microsoft Excel, they give you the nice colors. They, they show you what your formula is doing visually, nice ability to check your work. I hit return. And drag that down. Everybody, we have done part A of the question, creating a profit table. Wasn't that easy with the spreadsheet tool? You can save a lot of time. Now, there are no marks for formatting, but some of my numbers are greater than a thousand. So just to clean this up a bit so it's easier on my eye, and the eye of the marker, I will just give this a little formatting. Okay, right to there. Part A, taken care of. Let's label our work before we move on to part B of the question. So this is part A, make it easy for the marker to find what we're doing. And because it's a spreadsheet, we can just move over here, guys, and we can come over to here and do part B. And we're going for the expected value of the profit. So now we just need to plug in the probabilities, everybody. So let's make a new column here. That could be the probability. <clears throat> then we can do the profit multiplied by the probability. And finally, we could do then expected value. Spreadsheet tool just making it so much more, so much easier and making it an enjoyable enjoyable task okay so let's come back over here and do we have those probabilities well sure we do it's 0.4 for the 120 demand 0 0.5 0 0.1 that's 40 percent 50 percent and 10 percent then we've got a 30 percent a 30 percent a 40%. These numbers are taken directly from the question, guys. Directly from the question given to us. Now, let's make it crystal clear that those are probabilities. So we'll show those as percentages. Okay. And profit times probability will simply be equal to my profit multiplied by my probability hit return drag that down saving lots of time and the expected value then will be the sum everybody of the different options for each pricing so we can use again a formula that will be equal to for the $30 that will be equal to the sum of this range of cells right here And
plan because we are using a very nice neatly prepared table we can now just copy paste that using the principles of relative cell addressing and we can get the expected value for the $35 pricing. Let's put all of that to our standard formatting. Okay. No marks for formatting, we're just trying to make it a bit easier on our eyes and for the marker to follow what we are doing. Okay, let's not miss out on some easy marks. It says calculate, but it also says recommend. Okay, so let's make sure that is for price of 30. Copy that down, copy, paste, that's a price That's for a price of 35. Which one has the higher expected value? Well, clearly the $35 does. So let's just come right over here. And now we can say, let's make our recommendation a price of $35 has the highest expected value. Therefore, I recommend this option period and we get the one mark for making the decision easy peasy lemon squeezy guys we've got part a taken care of let's make that bold easier to find we've got part b taken care of Let's now do part C of the question, everybody. And part C is mixing in a little bit of writing and a little bit of decision making. So they ask us to explain maxi min. Let us do that using plain, simple English. We'll make a section down here for part C. Make that bold. And let's make it very easy for the marker to follow along. Part C, first thing we have to do. Maximin explained. Okay. This is the decision rule for the risk averse decision maker okay they will find the worst case so in our situation we need to look at our profit table again let's go upstairs and have a look at that and we are going to find the best of the worst case so it looks like 742 is the lowest at price of 35. 740, everybody. Is the worst case scenario in the first pricing option. So if we were risk averse, we would go with the price of 35 which gives us a slightly higher lowest possible profit okay so in our situation a price of $35 gives us a slightly better option than the worst case of the $30 price. So I will choose 35 
under maxi min. Okay, there we have it, everybody. Decision making under risk and uncertainty made easy by the spreadsheet tool. Remember, no marks for formatting. We're formatting only to make it easier for the marker to read a bit and for us um, in our navigation of the spreadsheet. We don't need any fancy functions. We can do everything we need to do with the function sum. If we're asked to write, to explain things, make sure you use full sentences. And if you have three marks, make sure you give three ideas. In this question, they asked us to explain it and then make our decision, our, our choice. So we did that very clearly, easy for the marker to follow what we're doing. Okay, guys, hope you found that helpful. Try that again at home. Be ready for that in your exam, and I say goodbye for now.